Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Mirror Dungeon solo video. Today we will be using debatably one of the worst identities in the game, Chef Gregor. The main reason he's so bad is because his rolls are so abysmally awful that only his skill too is capable of reliably rolling higher than a 10. With that said though, he's actually not that bad of a solo unit. At least in the Mirror Dungeon, that is. The only part of his kit that makes him somewhat viable is the final coin effect on his skill 3, which heals a maximum of 20% of his total HP based on the target's bleed. At level 45, this means that it heals Chef Gregor a whopping 40 HP almost every time he uses a skill 3, making it one of the single strongest and most reliable healing in the entire game. With his terrible rolls and absurd healing capabilities, it makes Chef Gregor play completely differently than any other character. He cannot clash, so he has to tank almost every attack, and then heal back the damage afterwards. He also lacks damage entirely, which makes him completely reliant on bleed doing all of it for him. This makes him a very solid damage over time heal tank, or at least it would if he actually had good numbers. I can only in good conscience say that he's a decent identity when soloing the Mirror Dungeon and in no other context. He doesn't make a good tank unit outside of soloing because he has no aggro and with terrible clashing it means he cannot redirect, while also being able to heal. The second and more important part is that he lacks any sort of good bleed application at all, with only two bleed potency and two count spread between all of his skills. If you don't have a metric ton of bleed support, he will never be getting good value out of his heal, which is why he's only good in the mirror dungeon by himself. Support passives for this run are standard, like always, but with Pequod Yi Song in case I get any poise gifts, spoiler I don't, and Corp Heathcliff because I thought all of his passives were useless and didn't realize base worked with Gregor, and base Otis because I simply forgot to change her into something actually useful. For our starting gifts, we take Wound Claret and Little and Tubi Naughty Plushie, choosing the Outcast for the first floor. We do find both Late Bloomer's Tattoo and Grey Coat along the way, which are somewhat helpful. For the first boss of the run, we take a trip back to Kanto 1 and are fighting the Golden Apple. Despite the fact that it's basically a 50-50 whether we can win clashes or not, this fight is still just as easy as it would be with any other identity. Wound Claret is virtually required for this identity to be any good, though. You can do a run with basically just Chef Gregor and Wound Claret, and it would be more than enough. For our reward, we take Contained Maggots, which honestly doesn't really do anything, and we receive Lithograph as a bonus before heading into Hell's Chicken for the next floor. Here we buy Coffee and Cranes and Contaminated Needle and Thread. We find Phantom Pain along the way before eventually making it to Papa Bongi. The Papa is always a little scary on the first turn thanks to having 6 damage up, but we do have a few options to make it more manageable. The first is to use a different Ego to change our Wrath Fatality, and the second which I opt for is to use Ledger Domain and reduce his damage through the Paralysis. For the second turn, all the damage we took is immediately healed back with a single skill 3, and the rest of the fight boils down to basically rolling 50-50s to win clashes, healing any damage we take with our skill 3s, and letting Bleed do most of the damage for us. For our reward, we take Phlebotomy Pack and receive Respite as a bonus. The next floor we take is Emotional Craving, where we fuse Red Stained Gossipium and find Rusted Muzzle before heading into the boss against the Wayward Passenger. With us being resistant to slash damage, the only thing we really need to worry about is him stacking up too much Rupture on us that could eventually outdamage our healing. Even with this though, Gregor himself isn't the best when dealing with the portals. He can only barely manage to break two of them while using both of his egos, but ultimately it doesn't matter that much. Once the passenger returns, we can stagger one of his arms while also simultaneously stacking nearly a full bleed stack. 
The second time he retreats into his portals, we have enough skills to destroy three of them, leaving only the speed one, which literally doesn't matter. One good thing about the passenger is that he maintains all of his status effects when he disappears into the portals, meaning our high bleed stack is still active, and while the rupture stack on us does get a little too high, a skill check pops up which prevents us from staggering. He retreats into his portals for a third time, but this time we don't manage to defeat any of them. A misplay on my part for sure, but again doesn't matter that much. This time when he comes back, we clash with what we can and continue letting Bleed do its thing, which ultimately wins us the fight. We take Helterfly's Dream as our reward and head into Insignificant Envy for the next floor. Here we buy Oracle and arrested him, while also fusing smoke and wires. For this floor's boss, we get a rematch with the Wayward Passenger, which ends up being nearly virtually identical to his previous fight, so let's just skip this instead. We take Peace of a Relationship as our reward, and head into Time Killing Time for the final floor. Here we buy Painkillers, an extra skill 3, and Rusted Cutting Knife. We find prepaid Time Receipt, and buy a third skill 3 before finally facing the Time Ripper. He's an interesting fight, and certainly a difficult one for Chef Gregor. With most of his dangerous attacks being pierce damage, we're guaranteed to always be taking a ton of damage no matter what we do. The contaminated needle and thread gift we got on the second floor shows off how good it can be, inflicting 70 bleed potency by using a single ego makes it more than enough to permanently deal with his minions. All that bleed is more than enough to force the Time Ripper into his second phase, where the real challenge begins. Like any multi-phase fight, he cleanses all of our bleed, but that's not the biggest problem. Instead, the fact that he has five different brains means we need to effectively build five different bleed stacks to get any sort of real damage going. Honestly, the hardest part of this fight was trying to figure out which brain had what bleed stack. It's basically just a guessing game at the end of the day, but as long as you target them somewhat equally, it should be enough. He does manage to inflict a lot of bleed on us too, which is enough to bring us below our stagger threshold, but only a few skill 3s are needed to instantly return back to full health. If anything, the Time Ripper's hoarded time works against him, as it only serves to speed up his bleeding out. This is how a bleed tank should function. No clashing, no damage, just bleed and regeneration.
썰어볼까? 오, 너무 많이 했나? 언제 들고 가지? And that's how I soloed Mirror Dungeon 4 hard with only Chef Gregor. This run just goes to show how good he could potentially be if he simply had aggro and better bleed application. As he is now though, he will remain permanently as a usable support passive for Lust Identity solo runs and any run with Chef Ryoshu. Anyway, like and subscribe to not miss next time where we'll be using this strange individual. Goodbye.